uh, sorry for my English, I'm not English spoken. I will try to do my best. I'm going to present you the, the SEB engine we are using within Red Border Sorama and more or less explain why we are using WSO2. First of all, I will introduce myself. I'm the CTO and co-founder of a company called Neo Tecnología, founded in 2003. We are located in Seville, uh, to the south of Spain. And right now we are 10 people. We use uh, all the platform is open source. Uh, we believe firmly in, in open source. I'm in charge of uh, strategic product development, roadmap definition, uh, technology selection, and all other areas. Our main product is Red Border Orama. It's an open source security and network visibility management solution. And in a sense, compared to WSO2, it's a great framework. We are very specific uh, solution for a very specific field. So don't expect to use this in any other, well, actually it could be used, but it's not the point. It is completely open source. We do, we use a Afero GPL license for all the software. And also we have some dual licensing agreements with some of our, uh, our partners. There is a community release, as everybody does. There is also an enterprise release. But in opposition to other people, uh, the enterprise release is also open source. And that was one of the reasons to choose uh, WSO2 is that they follow more or less the same business model. All their software is open source. And for us, it was very important to, to keep that clear. In security, right now, what we have done is a rule management and event management system for us north, for a big, uh, big bank here in, in Spain. And for network visibility, what we have done is a NetFlow 5, 9, IPv6, Flow, well, a bunch of standards uh, collector. Okay, it's freely available in redboarder.org, but currently it's only the IPS, and it's still based on SQL. Because the reason uh, we employ all this is because the SQL technology we were using uh, was born out due to the, the data volume. Here you see one slide, this is the, the dashboard. As you see, we are working also on a mobile interface. Here, another one. Here, uh, you have the stadium. We are monitoring the users in the stadium. Where are they connecting? What kind of devices are they using? If they are using Facebook, Twitter, if they are blaming about the team, if they won't purchase something. Well, this is a use case uh, with a partner. Uh, this is more or less the architecture. In a sense, uh, right now we have the NetFlow collector, the IPS, but as you see, we are planning for other products. One is a log management system based kind of Splunk. How many of you know Splunk? Well, Splunk is a huge product, a great product, but it's very expensive. So we want to do more or less the same in an open source way. And also we have a malware project with um, some of our clients too. Uh, we work ma mainly for banks. And in a sense, those will be the, the capabilities. So in a sense, uh, what our product reality is a Kafka bus. And what we do is we take the message, everything we, we produce or get is in Kafka. Actually, we contributed to, to SEP, uh, WSO2, the, the Kafka plugin for, for SEP, both to, to inject Kafka events as also to, to produce Kafka events. So in a sense, what we have done is a Kafka bus. Uh, the, those messages are processed in a real-time pipeline. Part of it is based on WSO2. And then the events go to an OLAB engine and Hadoop, as everybody. Okay. So our interface works mainly through the OLAB engine. It doesn't touch the uh, Hadoop. You know Hadoop is very slow for that. So uh, what we do is manage uh, the OLAB engine as multi-tenant, multi-scale uh, multi out, and all the, the typical words that you will see. But the main point is, is real time and also is uh, long term. Is but it only works with aggregated data. It doesn't work with each and every one event. We have to aggregate the data. The minimum point is one minute. Okay, so all the events that go in a, in a minute that share a certain characteristics go to the same uh, row. Okay, but it's schemaless, so it's very easy to adapt to any other product. So uh, as the complex event processing, we, ex we consider this element further than the step uh, in WSO2. In a sense, uh, right now, what we do, or what, actually what we are trying to do, supposedly at this time I was going to talk to you about the performance numbers we were getting and all that, but the main problem is we don't, <laughs> we don't have the software yet. So this part of the software is right now in development. So uh, the first stage is still is, uh, data enrichment. What we do is in geolocation, uh, reputation. Yeah, I don't know, in the security area, 
you know that there are some providers that tell you if an IP is a bad guy or a good guy, a spammer or malware or whatever. So we take those feeds and enrich the flow that goes through the, the system, you know, providing a score, a risk score, uh, either IP domain or URL. We also cross-reference with inventory information and user information. For example, when you get an IP, you get the user. From the user, you can get the group. From the group, you get if it's in vacation, if it should be in, the same, in that place or not. Uh, well, we're doing pretty stuff. Uh, we did a proof of concept with uh, social media data to know if people was happy or not. Actually, some of the sli uh, slides you saw were in the Mo Mobile World Congress. So we put uh, the, the level of happiness of the people with the Wi-Fi network. So it was a, a metric showing if the people was happy or not. Okay, after that, uh, we, we will do data mining, in particular in two fields. One is outlier detection and the other is classification. Then we hope to do uh, data sketching. We, we already have one, is uh, the, the cardinality estimation using hyperlog log uh, algorithms. And right now we are working on QD, um, percentile estimation uh, using QDGest or TGDest. I don't know if you are pretty aware of this field, but in a sense when the data volume is huge, you need to in some way reduce it, okay? So our main idea, well actually it's not our idea, everybody's doing that, is to use uh, data sketches that more or less are similar to the real data, but the data volume is, is much more smaller. Actually, we hope to contribute part of this to uh, WSO2 uh, SIP engine. And last comes the, the, SIP, the real SIP, the rules uh, uh, SIP, where we will do uh, surge detection, loss detection, by the way, it's missing the loss. Uh, right now the SIP, so we have to add that one. Uh, apply time window rules, filtering, establish relationships, all that stuff. Okay, so for that last piece, we had three alternatives. We had uh, Red Hat rules, Esper, and CD. Actually, I discovered WSO2 through CD. I was not aware of WSO2. I discovered CD, and then CD project was kind of acquired or incorporated into WSO2, and that's why we are working with them. Uh, but in our case, we don't use the full stack, only on this specific piece, and we have an OEM agreement. Or we are, actually, we are working on an OEM agreement, okay? So uh, Red Hat rules, in a sense, didn't work for us. It's too slow. Esper was nice, but Esper uh, used a dual licensing business model. They have some things that are proprietary, and in particular, we were seeking for some of the things they have in proprietary, and they, we were not willing to pay for that. And not only to pay for that, but, but it was going to be difficult to make our software open source when that specific piece is, was not going to be open source. So I'm not saying it's not a good option, but well, we found CD and it was a better option. Okay, so right now we are uh, starting to work uh, with uh, WSO2 uh, SEP, incorporated into, the, into our platform. Our first idea of how we were going to deploy this was kind of, well, I say clumsy. Uh, in a sense, uh, what we were trying to do is each step was going to uh, use its own Kafka queue. It was going to read from a Kafka queue and inject the data back to a different Kafka queue. Then the next one was going to read from that one and go again to a different uh, queue. And that was very simple. Was Supposedly, it was very easy to do. But at the same, pro at the same time, uh, uh, we thought that it was going to produce a huge uh, pressure in the in the Kafka layer, especially, I don't know if you are aware, well, Kafka is a messaging system, it's very, very popular right now, everybody's using it, has some great points, some other are not so great, but in particular has one feature that is part of the, its design that stores everything in hard disk, and you will say, oh, that's, that's, not, that's not going to scale. The reality is that they do it very well, so it's not that, that bad. Uh, you can see benchmarks showing like three million uh, events per machine and things like that. But still, if we do many times at the same machine, all the reading and writing to disk is going to be a, a mess, or it was going to be a mess. Either way, at the time was the, the way we thought we were going to do it. So uh, we developed the, the Kafka plugin for uh, WSO2 uh, SEP, and we uh, sent it to, to these guys, and they were fun enough that they, they accepted and they put it in the, into the source code, which is fun because Sourcefire, for example, we have sent them like five patches. We are still waiting them. So 
at least uh, these guys show uh, respect to community and willingness to, to collaborate with, with others. Now, as I say, this, this was establishing or putting a lot of pressure in the Kafka, key, in the Kafka layer. So that we decided to kind of try a different thing. So uh, right now, we, well, at the time, we decided, you know, the alternatives in, well, event processing systems, not really complex event processing. There are three of them. One is, Storm, well, actually one is Yahoo S4, but probably nobody is using it right now. Then comes uh, what it used to be Twitter uh, yeah, Storm, now Apache Storm. If you are in the field, you will probably know uh, Samsa. It's from LinkedIn, and especially uh, Spark. Everybody's talking about Spark. Well, either way, at the time we choose uh, Storm, uh, we started to, to work with Storm and doing all the previous uh, layers into Storm. That, that's probably, uh, that's actually what we are doing right now. And the point is, well, Storm is good or bad. Well, it depends. But the main point is <laughs> WSO2 decided by themselves, not, <laughs> we didn't influence that, to also port uh, the CEP platform to Storm. So at least we had one layer solved. And also, uh, you see that we have a data mining layer. And in that one, we want to use, uh, well, at the time we were thinking in MOA. I don't know if you know MOA. MOA is a software from Yahoo. And actually, it's partially developed here in Barcelona. The guys from MOA belong to the group in the University uh, Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. It's a very strong group in data mining. And actually, uh, some of their students are now in Netflix and uh, Yahoo. Well, either way, we plan to use uh, MOA. But the problem is we have to do all the porting of MOA to whatever streaming platform. But then these guys decided to do some MOA. That is MOA for a storm. So, everything came, came together. And at this moment, uh, we expect to do uh, everything within Storm. As, as I said, uh, well, we have just one single queue where all the different products are going to write external products. Uh, each one on its specific topic or partition, well, uh, is the way that uh, Kafka scales, doing a lot of partitions. Then a Storm process is going to read from that Kafka queue and is going to do all the processing. Starting with enrichment, it's going to be our own uh, data mining based on Samoa and MOA. The SEP based on WSO2. And then uh, after that process, instead of putting the, the information back into a Kafka queue and from there into the OLAP and Hadoop, we are going to directly inject to the OLAP and, and the Hadoop. Well, let's see how it comes. Right now, what we do is we have only one single Kafka queue. All the events go to that queue and they are read it by the OLAP engine and the Hadoop engine. That's one of the advantages of, of Kafka is you can have several processes reading from the same uh, queue, and each one is going to have its own offset. So it's possible to read things in real time and things, say, every hour. Okay, I think that this is the last one. Yeah, yeah I have 10 minutes. Okay, well, if you want to put <laughs> the rest of the, of the video, but any uh, questions, guys? I can see you, but I have seen some rising right. hands. Sorry, I think I missed the start. So uh, I just didn't quite get a handle on the business case of uh, what you're actually doing. I understand the technology, but uh, if you just cover that again so I can get the whole picture, just the front bit the actual business uh, problem that you're solving? Well, as I said, what, in, I mean, if you compare to WSO2, WSO2 is a platform that allows you to do almost everything you want, okay? There are a lot of use cases. What we have done is we have adapted several pieces of technology, and in particular, some of them from WSO2 to a very specific use case that is security and network visibility management. What we want to do is receive uh, security VMs from firewalls, IPS devices, uh, email gateways, uh, web gate gateways, all that kind of stuff. Some login platforms like uh, identity servers like uh, Active Directory or LDAP or Radius or things like that. But our focus is on uh, security, okay? The reason we provide network visibility is in security sometimes you need context. So it's great to see the security event but at the same time be able to see what was the traffic like yesterday or one year ago or from that same point, 
Okay, so it, it provides uh, some context. We are aware some of our clients are inquiring, for example, as I said, we work a lot for banks. So one of them wants us to, to adopt this to financial market. What, in a sense, what we are going to do is take a financial transaction, generate a Kafka message, and from there it's going to be in, injected into the queue. All the rest is the same, because actually we don't care what you inject. As long as it's uh, uh, JSON within uh, Kafka, it's going to take it because all the platform is schemaless. So you can put money as you can put traffic. Okay, of course, there will be some adaptation, adaptation but, but from our side, it's not our goal. I mean, our goal is security and network visibility. We, we are getting some inquiries and probably some of them will be evaluated, but I don't think will be our real uh, business focus. Is that, was, is that okay for, for you? Another question? Um, what is the license behind? Uh, well, as I said, the, well, underneath the platform, there's a lot of open source. Uh, so that open source is in the license that comes through uh, either GPL or BSD, Apache, or whatever. Our interface is fully uh, Afero GPL, okay? And well, what we do is, in the dual licenses model, is we get some clients that don't want to have Afero, so we agree with them so, to change the license some way, uh, proprietary or whatever, that's part of our business model. But in a sense, the platform is fully open source, at least right now, and that's what we, we expect. We have a community release, or we will have a community release that will be freely available, and then we will have an enterprise release that will add some features, but still those features will be open source, okay? The main thing is, right now it's not available in the website. The, the website, you have the old, okay, this, this project started because we, a bank wanted to do an IPS for them. So we did the IPS, and we did it with SQL. But with time, when we started with the Netflow, Netflow product, we saw that the, the SQL engine was going to blow <laughs> very, easy, very easily, so we had to redo all the backend from SQL to big data, okay? So that is what is going to come up, come up now, but still in the website you can have the, the IPS if you want. But not, not that this fancy one with big data that fast and all that. But everything is going to be open source. Well, actually, some pieces might not be open source. For example, I told you about the reputation IP, or reputation feeds. Those are external services that are proprietary from their owners and we just resell them. Any other question? I have five minutes. <laughs> okay, well. Okay, ho hope you enjoyed and that's it from my, from my side. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, Sam. Yeah.